Next question from the mailbag is coming from Byron on Instagram. He's asking, do higher drops unload the calf or just the Achilles? So he's differentiating in his head, the calf gastroc soleus muscles from the Achilles tendon. Um, so he's, he's asking, do higher drops unload the calf or just the Achilles? I feel like higher drops put me on my forefoot and load my calves more. And just for, just to make sure we're all on the same page, drop refers to the difference between the amount of foam in terms of height in the heel to the forefoot. So if there's 35 millimeters of height of foam in the heel and 25 millimeters of foam in the forefoot, that's a 10 millimeter drop. Typically, typically a high drop is going to be 10 to 12 difference. Low drop is going to be four or less. Kind of that middle zone is six to eight. Um, if you had stilettos, those would be really high drop shoes. Um, those high heels, obviously that's an extreme example. So, um, Matt, yeah. What do we know about Achilles and, and calf loading with high drop shoes? So there's actually the, the viewer, they're asking two separate, about two separate variables. So I'm going to address yeah, they're both asking of if, them. Yeah. Are the structures differentiated is his yeah. main question. Right. And if so, so how or not? Generally for higher drop shoes, what that's going to do is it's going to elevate your heel and it's going to shorten your Achilles. So you don't have to go through as much range of motion through your gastrox soleus and Achilles complex to get over your foot. Generally for normal gates, I think usually they say, oh, you need at least, and not even for running for walking too, you need at least like 20 ish degrees of dorsiflexion. That's where again, your ankle mm -hmm. joint, it bends upwards um, you need that to bend at least 20 degrees for normal. Actually, I think it's like minimum is 10 degrees, but for normal is considered yeah. 20 for running. You sometimes need even more than that. Um, if you have a high drop shoe, you need less of that range of motion to get over that foot. Um, specifically going through, um, the ankle rocker in that area. So yeah, so usually it will unload that area only because it requires a little bit less motion to get through. Whereas if you have a low drop shoe, you're going to spend more time at end range of motion of like maximally lengthened calf, which either extreme, if you're maximally shortened or maximally lengthened, that puts a lot more pressure in that area. It just means you have to have that much strength at that range of motion. Muscles are length specific. If you train a muscle at one specific place, you're going to be really strong there, but you're going to be weak everywhere else. It's like the guys you see at the gym, they're doing the bicep curls and they're only doing that small range of motion. They're going to be strong, really, really strong there. But if you take them anywhere outside of that and then muscle test them, they're going to test weaker than you would expect just because of that. So muscles length specific now. So again, just reiterate a higher drop can unload the calves. If you are a four foot striker, that's going to put more load to the calf. And if you're someone that going into a higher drop shoe gets you up more on your toes, it is for you, not for everyone, for you, it's going to put more stress to the calf and Achilles because you're using that structure more. That's all it means. There is some interesting evidence, by the way, that having a higher drop or a lower drop shoe can also put more stress to the Achilles. So Achilles tendon can be irritated by overly stretch, stretching it or overly compressing it. So there's some early evidence that that can go either way, but generally higher drop unloads it, but it just depends on some of the mechanisms and how you're landing. So a really hard heel strike and sometimes can still compress the Achilles a little bit, but this is very dependent. So to answer the question fully, yes, higher drop usually unloads your calf muscles, but if you're going up on your forefoot, no, you're still going to be loading it. So for you, yeah, you're loading it more. Yeah, I just want to add too because, I mean, we're we're, we're dancing in theory, right? Yep. But if it's important to differentiate between joints and muscles as well, so yes, you have less ankle range of motion you have to move through. However, the gastrocnemius is indeed a two joint muscle. That changes things. Because anecdotally, at the distal hamstrings, proximal gastroc, up in that kind of posterior knee region, I have felt a little bit more tension sometimes from running in higher drop shoes and extremely low drop shoes, like how you were saying. That's anecdotal, but it's it can take some pressure off of that ankle and Achilles, but it's got to go somewhere and it's going to go up the chain. The gastroc isn't as simple as just a little calf at the very bottom of your leg. 
there's a lot more to it. Uh, again, it, in, in most people, yes, but it, it's going to unload it. it but it, for, for other people, for, not for everyone. For some people, it might actually load it a little bit more and maybe it'll load it in a different region. So I think yeah. the other, I, I think that's a good point. And I think um, the other place to consider maybe for what some people experience if they run in higher drop, a lot of this is going to be dependent on how you run as well. Like what are your mechanics and what type of motion do you go through? Because if we, I want to, hopefully this makes sense, but let's take it to an extreme example of saying that running on a high drop shoe, let's just make it way higher, like 40 millimeter drop or something like running down a hill. Okay. So if you're running down a hill, there's going to be a couple things that change that we know. If anyone's ran down a hill, you know, your quads get trashed, right? Like your, your quads are working to help with that deceleration. So the other thing that happens when you're running downhill, or if your tibia is going forward at a faster rate, um, if your tibia is going forward, one of the muscles that controls that motion of your tibia is your soleus because it holds the ankle secure as it's moving forward. And that's kind of hard to picture if you haven't spent time thinking about biomechanics and stuff. But reality is, is that, that as your tibia is moving forward, when you're walking, something that controls that and contracts eccentrically is your soleus. And so it's slowing that rate so that your knee doesn't just boom, fall, to, fall to the ground. So your quad is holding it from above, your soleus is holding it from below and preventing your knee from collapsing. And so if you're run, if you're running in, in a certain mechanical way where you get into a higher drop shoe, that's not obviously 40 millimeters, but like 12 millimeters, and that's bringing your tibia forward more, your soleus might have to hold on tighter to prevent some of the translation forward of the tibia. And so th I think that could be something else to consider, but I, I do think by and large for myself and for a lot of the patients that I work with, if they're having Achilles issues, particularly distal Achilles, like insertional, it keeps them out of places that put compression stress through like a stretching mechanism, like a shoe that's going to be zero drop might have a little bit more stretch through the Achilles, especially like where it's attaching into the heel bone than something that's higher drop. So yes, in general, it should actually offload the calf and the Achilles, but for some in certain circumstances, you might see the opposite. And that's where obviously if you're having go ongoing problems, that's where you gotta see an ortho PT who works with runners who can help you decipher what's going on. And obviously it's more than just shoes, but how can you use the right shoes in your scenario? It's not gonna be a one size fits all. Surprise, surprise. So, so as always the answer is it depends, but yeah. right. The worst answer ever but it's the right answer a lot of times it is yeah sorry so, to make your uh, quest for the answer more muddy yes absolutely 